this class we're going to go over uh, scientific notation and exponents. Uh, any number can be shown as a decimal with one number to the left of the decimal point multiplied by 10 raised to a power. That's called scientific notation. So we recall that 10 to the power of 1 is equal to 10, 10 to the power of 2 is 100, 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000, etc. And if you raise anything to the power of 0, it equals 1. So 10 to the 0 would give you 1. 10 to the minus 1 is 1 tenth. 10 to the minus 2 is 1 one hundredth. 10 to the minus 3 is 1 one thousandth, and so on. So it is possible to show really large and really small numbers using scientific notations. Here, here are a couple of examples. There's 4,300. The decimal place is here at 4,300, but if we move it, if we jump it three times, we end, it ends up between the 4 and the 3, and we get 4.3 times 10 to the 3. We, put, we choose our exponent by the number of times the decimal place has to be moved. If you move the decimal place to the left, the exponent goes up, becomes more positive. If you move the exponent, if you move the decimal to the right, the, uh, des the exponent becomes more negative. So for example, let's show an example where uh, you would use this to prevent having to write huge numbers. If I was to multiply 6 times 10 to the 23 times 6 times 10 to the 23, using scientific notation, 6 times 6 gives you 36, and then you add the exponents, so you get 10 to the 46. Whenever you multiply exponents, as long as the base is the same, you will get, uh, you simply add the, the numbers that are used as the exponent to give you the, the final answer. If I was to do that using the conventional way, here's 6 times 10 to the 23 times the same number, and here's the answer. So it's very cumbersome to write it all out that way. We'll go on to the next board. We have a couple of examples, a few examples. If I multiply 12 times 10 to the 3 by 10 to the times 10 to the 4, I would get 12 times 10, which is 120. And then I add these exponents, so we get 10 to the 7. Now we don't leave it as 120 times 10 to the 7. The decimal place is here. So if we want to write it in proper scientific notation, we would uh, skip the decimal over two places, and it would give us 1.2 times 10 to the 9. Likewise, 4 times 10 to the 7 times 5 times 10 to the 6 is 4 times 5, which gives you 20. 10 to the 7 times 10 to the 6 gives you 10 to the 13. And for the 20, we move the decimal over by 1 to get 2.0. And then we, because we move the decimal over to the left, we raise the exponent by 1. So we get 10 to the 14. 3 times 10 to the minus 7 times 6 times 10 to the minus 8. Now we're working with negative exponents. We're working with very small numbers. 3 times 6 gives you 18. 10 to the 7 times 10 to the 8 is minus 10 to the minus 15. We want to write in proper scientific notation, so we're going to move the decimal over by one spot, giving us 1.8. When you move it over to the left, the number gets bigger, so we go 10 to the minus 14. Now you might be tempted to go 10 to the minus 15. Uh, from, my, from 10 to the minus 15 to 10 to the minus 16. But remember, the decimal becomes, uh, when a decimal moves to the left, the exponent becomes more positive. So it goes up, 10 to the minus 14. 12 times 10 to the minus 5 times 12 times 10 to the minus 6 gives you 144 times 10 to the positive 1. Minus 5 plus 6 gives you positive 1. We move the decimal over twice, so that gives us 1.44 times 10 to the 3. This number won't fit in your calculator. So this is an example of how powerful this technique is. Your calculators will only normally go up to 10 to the 99 or to 10 to the minus 99. Both of these numbers are bigger than what normal calculators can handle. 7 times 10 to the minus 111 times 8 times 10 to the 222 gives you 56 times 10 to the 111. You then move the decimal over by 1, and it becomes 112. Here's an example of how you rewrite a number that has lots of zeros in it as a scientific notation. You simply skip the decimal over again and the requisite number of times, so that it ends up as one number to the left of the decimal and whatever's left over to the right, and you end up with 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7. So there's seven jumps, and you, and you move the decimal uh, into the more negative direction when you move your decimal to the right. So your exponents become more negative as you move the decimal to the right. This is one trillion. The decimal is here. You have to skip it over 12 times to put it over here, so we put 10 to the positive 12. And here's another one that has a huge number that would be completely uh, useless for most mathematical applications. You'll never use a number this big, but it's just an exercise. 2.0 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4 
times 3 to the, times 10 to the 2,345. Your calculators can't do this, but you get 2 times 3, which equals to 6. And if you add these two numbers, 1,234 plus 2,345 gives you 3,579. So that's your exponent. If you were to write this number out, you would have a 6 with 3,579 zeros following. So there are five rules of exponents that are fairly, uh, that you're, you should know by this time. Uh, whenever you have a number raised to the power of 3 times a number raised to the power of 4, the answer will be raised to the power of 7. Now to do this, you have to have the same base. Both of the bases have to be x or y or some number. You can't have different bases and then add the exponents. If you're dividing exponents, x to the 7 divided by x to the 4 will give you x to the 3. Again, the same rule applies. You have to have the same base. If you raise an exponential number to an exponential power, then you multiply the two exponents that the number is being raised by to give the actual the value, x to the 12 in this case. x to the 4 raised to the power of 3 is equal to x to the 12. I have another example here. If you have x squared raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 2, then you multiply through all the exponents and you get x to the 8. x to the 10, 10 raised to the power of 1 half is like x to the 5, because 1 half times 10 gives you 5 x to the power of 0 is 1. Any number raised to the power of 0 equals 1. 1 million raised to the power of 0 will give you 1. Lastly, whenever you have an exponent that is negative, you can take the reciprocal of the number and it will give you the, 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 chain, the um, exponent will change sign. So x to the minus 3 becomes 1 over x to the 3. 1 over x to the minus 5 becomes x to the positive 5. Uh, here we can use our newfound skill of working with exponents to do a couple thought experiments. First question is, if 7 billion persons stood rank and file like an army in a square, how much space would be used? So each person would have one meter square so that you could stand with your hand, hands on your hips and your elbows would be sticking out and they would barely touch the person next to you. And you can imagine all the people standing in rows, 7 billion people is the population of the earth. As it turns out, you would have a row with 82,666 people in it. And it would also be 82,666 meters wide and long. So it would be a square. So a square with a length of 83.6 kilometers would be sufficient to allow the entire population of the Earth to stand rank and file. Now let's take it one step further. Let's work in three dimensions. Suppose you had to build an apartment building to house the entire population of the Earth. How tall would it be? This classroom is 17.5 by 9 by 3 meters. So if each and every human being in the entire planet had as much room as this classroom, and then you doubled that amount so you could make space for, for malls and shopping and parking and elevator shafts and everything else, corridors, every human being in the entire planet would have 945 cubic meters. So we take that number, multiply it by 7 billion, and we get that the building itself would have to be 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 12 meters cubed, 6.6 .6 trillion cubic meters. If we take the cube root of that number, we will find the height of the cube that would be 6.6 .6 trillion cubic meters. So just like if you take the cube root of 8, which is the same as 8 to the power, one third power, it equals the number 2. Two, by, 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 8. Well, we'll do the same with this number, and we get 18,700 meters. So a building big enough to house the entire population of the Earth with 905 cubic, 945 cubic meters for every man, woman, and child would only be 18.7 kilometers tall. Lastly, uh, we have just a simple exercise where I multiply the number 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and a million. And if you know your, your uh, exponents, you can rewrite these numbers as 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 4, and so on. You add all the powers, and the answer is 10 to the 20. You don't even need a calculator to do it. Questions? 